In 2003, it was beautiful spring day in Korea, cherry blossoms everywhere. Uh, when I received this letter from mailman, <laughs> and I looked at it, it was from Indiana University. I was really nervous to open this envelope because I knew this includes a result of my audition that I took a couple months prior to that. When I opened it, <laughs> it said I was accepted to a master's program in piano performance in Indiana University. I was jumping with happiness and thinking, ah, wow, this is be the way that I will become that pianist I always dreamed. I will be going to America and study. You know, at that moment, everything seems to be possible and hopeful. I came to America at Indiana University to study master's degree and continue on for a doctorate program there as well. Being in the Bloomington, Indiana, it literally felt like uh, heaven. <laughs> It's actually a tiny town, but it's full of amazing musicians all over the world. I was really happy pianist. Only thing I thought about was how to become better pianist, practice long hours, and you know, I didn't think about what really would mean to be a pianist other than just practicing at the time. When I finished final exam and final recital, uh, I became Dr. Kim in 2009. I remember the day that I received the certificate that I became Dr. Kim. It felt surreal, yet there was a sense of uncertainty at the same time. I studied so much at the same time I felt like I didn't know enough. <laughs> Someone said becoming a doctor of something is knowing how much you don't know enough, right? When I was practicing in my house and the next day, I realized that all along, I never thought about what it means to be a pianist in this world. I naively believed that maybe, maybe some booking agent knock on my practice room, or maybe I just automatically become a pianist and to be able to perform all over the world after I finished my study. Nothing happened. Nobody came to my door. <laughs> it definitely it was very confused stage of my life as a pianist. I went on to study piano pedagogy, uh, learning how to become a great teacher. I still figuring out what it means to be a pianist. <laughs> So I was still fairly confused in that direction. In 2015, I was final candidate for a lecturer position in one of the universities in San Diego. Because of the confirmation, 90%, I made myself relocated to San Diego. Um, San Diego was beautiful, I mean, it is beautiful, California, but everything seems also very foreign too. But I was very excited to start something new and maybe this professor position will allow me to do something that I always dreamed. And I received letter from this university that I was not accepted as a final position. I was devastated. I already relocated to San Diego. I have no job no students, no income, no concerts engagement. I don't have a friend, no connection. I was literally in a place that was disconnected from the world. At that very desperate place, I started to question everything, question about what I wanted to do for my life, what is important to my life. Still my core heart says, I want to perform piano. I want to share the joy of classical music with people. I love teaching piano. Maybe it's not full time. Mm, I wanted to be a concert pianist who also teaches. And I decided, you know what? Actually, being a university, it's not for me. 
I don't I didn't see that as a perfect fit for me. At that moment, I ditched that idea and decided to create my own path. The first thing I did was create my teaching business. At the time, I already had full studio back in Midwest. I just did not have any connection or student in San Diego, so I started from zero. So I created my own website, I created a logo, and put an advertisement on Google. I performed for Steinway for free. I gave a master classes uh, to some of the local amateur pianist group. I did everything that I could expose myself. It didn't take a long time for me to get the full studio. Besides starting my own teaching business at that time, I had an idea for my first album, which is called 10 More Minutes. And I put that idea to the world through crowdfunding called Kickstarter. Uh, that was $30,000 pledge that included a CD release concert at one of the most reputable concert hall in San Diego. It was incredibly difficult to ask even friends and family about this campaign. <laughs> I had to practice it so many times in my closet before I even say a word about this campaign, it was difficult to ask for help or donation for the project that I'm passionate about. In the process, I also learned that um, saying no or receiving no is nothing to do with my value as a person, as a pianist. I, I get a little bit more used to uh, getting no or without any personal attachment with it. The people who supported this project became a family or cheerleader, trooper, groupies of what I do. Uh, at the end, when this album came out, uh, it became not only my project, but also their project. So that was one of the most valuable lessons that I learned through this project, that having people to invite to my playground and have fun together. Soon I realized that being an independent artist in this time of era requires for me to be a booking agent, manager, <laughs> researching presenters, writing numerous emails, uh, call calls, receiving thousands, thousands of no's, uh, knowing how to build website, graphic design, PR, marketing, everything <laughs> that I didn't think I would need to be a pianist. But I did everything. It was always difficult, but I learned a lot by doing it and in the process. So I questioned every aspect of a classical piano concert. I decided that I wanted to talk on stage. Not a lot of them, very short and poetry-like. You know, I share my personal feelings or image that I have. You know, sometimes I will say, I imagine I'm swimming in a pond alone in the evening. Everything is peaceful and hopeful. Maybe that's all I would say in a certain piece. Microphone become almost a symbol of my concerts. And I designed my concert not longer than an hour, no intermission, not disappearing to backstage either. I stay right there on stage uh, with the audience from beginning to the end. And often I gave up concert program, not at the beginning, but only when they left. I wanted classical piano concert to be a shared experience, was contemporary, approachable, and friendly. <laughs> I also collaborated with filmmakers or poets or visual artists. When I sell these ideas to potential presenters, it it wasn't always accepted. Uh, some people would still say they just want 40 minutes of piano concert intermission and 40 minutes of recital rather than this a little more contemporary approach to a classical concert experience. But people loved it. <laughs> they uh, became really um, a groupies of what I'm trying to do. and. 
uh, everywhere I went, they cheered for my attempt and they loved my concept of concerts. And that made it possible for me to have Carnegie Hall debut concert to be sold out. I did not have any connection in New York. In fact, I don't know anyone in New York. Um, but I ask again to all the people that I met through concerts or my Kickstarter or, or all the people that supported my journey. And a lot of them flew to New York to be part of this concert. And it really felt like a magic. When I first walked out to Carnegie Hall, this beautiful chandelier and elegant space, I told to the audience, welcome to my dream. Obviously right now I don't have active concert schedule, but I still kept experimenting with what could be possible, what would be the creative way for me to communicate and still um, connecting with the people with music. I continue on with the journey of podcast. Although when you first, when I first started podcast, still really literally felt like I am talking to a wall without much of feedback. When I first started YouTube last November, it's about a year now. It's kind of like anniversary. <laughs> I had no idea what it meant. I was uncomfortable and probably that uncomfortable feeling was the very feeling that I wanted to face. So I kept doing. <laughs> what I learned through doing YouTube was that this online community, all of you, uh, became also part of my journey as well. Whether I give live concerts or not, um, you were also part of um, this musical community and understanding what I'm trying to do, support each other and connecting one another in expressing the joy of music together. So this year I finished my manuscript for my book, <laughs> my first book, and it will be published uh, 2021 August. I'm super excited about this book and writing is really interesting and creative process, you know, and I really enjoy that process and I enjoy so much. I continue writing every other Friday uh, through my newsletter. Every direction I took um, has been a lesson for me to uh, become a better person and better pianist and better teacher. Right now, I have a holistic view of classical music as a field, as a presenter, as a teacher, as a pianist, as an agent. When I first got an acceptance letter from Indiana University in Korea, I had no idea this is what it takes to be a pianist or to who I am now. When I think about my daily day and uh, who I am now, I'm definitely living my dream. I love creating connection. I love sharing classical music and the beauty of it. I love communicating all of you, maybe helping you to be a better musician or um, to be more positive. Certainly life never easy, but I find that with music, it's always better. And I can't wait to share more of it with you. I put this toy piano next to me who not recognize it, this was toy piano. Sometimes because of the dimension, you think it is like real piano, but it is a toy piano. 